This is looking at a, some parental population, some group of organisms, and we have a subset of them that gets moved to a new location. They found the new population. They're a founder population. That population is going to be smaller than the parental population. Immediately upon founding that population, there's going to be this founder effect because you have this sampling error where the allele frequency in the founder population may not be identical to that in the parental population. And if this founder population remains small over long periods of time, or even relatively short periods of time, multiple generations, then you have genetic bottlenecking, which can further reduce the amount of genetic variation within the population. And this actually has the effect, as we'll get to when we talk about speciation, of causing this population to diverge genetically from this population. It becomes different. And at this point, it's simply as a consequence of random changes that are becoming fixed within the population. So you get this potential for genetic divergence. And in fact, you might even have um, future success of this population and even speciation of this population. So now that you have a population that is not only distinct from the original population genetically, but actually is a viable ongoing population unto itself, and therefore, it can serve as some parental population that could give rise to a founder population, and so on and so forth. But when your population size is small, you're much more susceptible to extinction. So in a sense, these big populations can throw off founder populations left and right. Uh, but most of those founder populations will go extinct occasionally. One will be successful. And those are concepts that we'll get back to when we talk about speciation. 